degree in meteorology offers entry into many different fields. Working for federal government agencies, military, state and local government, universities, utilities, private industry, engineering consulting firms, and as most of everybody knows in the public, the broadcast meteorology. Info from Slate, a division of the Washington Post Company, says that broadcast meteorology doesn't require a degree. And as I researched, I found there to be no educational requirements listed for being a broadcast meteorologist. So in theory, anybody could send in an audition tape and become the TV weather guy. Most, if not all, the weather information broadcasted is the work of the research meteorologist. And yet, the broadcast meteorologist takes credit. Doesn't something seem off and unfair? How on earth could anybody get hired as a broadcast meteorologist without a degree in meteorology? Here's a bothersome statistic. Only about 50% of America's television weather forecasters are actually certified meteorologists. Why should meteorologists go through schooling, mathematics, physics, and atmospheric sciences when they can get the higher paying broadcasting higher paid broadcasting just by looking pretty and being a great public speaker. According to the New York Times, a meteorologist in Kansas City, Missouri said, there's not an evaluation of accuracy in hiring meteorologists. Presentation takes precedence over accuracy. Even more mind-boggling, described by Jim Rendon of the Wall Street Journal, is that some television weather broadcasters can earn between $100,000 and $300,000 a year and may not even have been involved in putting together any of the forecasts. Which means they get all of their info from some other government weather source, such as NOAA, and simply display it for the general public. I find this to be a major problem, not just because it's unfair towards meteorologists with a degree, but unfair to the public. Would anybody want to be informed by an un uneducated broadcast meteorologist that an EF5 tornado, much like the one in Joplin, Missouri, is about to hit in your vicinity? Wouldn't you agree that a pro meteorologist would be, would be best to condone your safety? Public safety should be the main priority. When severe weather hits, a higher percentage of people will usually tune into the weather experts. Most of the time, inexperienced Weather forecasters are found lacking knowledge at the worst moment possible when severe weather strikes. Listed by Greg Quill from the Star, TV weather credentials for media forecasts are as follows. Proficient training in TV or radio broadcasting with some knowledge of meteorology and speaking correctly in a scientific manner about weather and climate intelligence. Ian Rutherford, Executive Director of the Canadian Meteorological and Oceanic Society states, you don't need a degree to qualify as a weathercaster, but you do have to be able to explain the weather in a way that won't make a real meteorologist cringe. I think it would be interesting if the TV ratings game relied on accurate forecasting and not just weather broadcasting showmanship. Weather forecasts will never be 100% accurate, David Zunkel of the Patriot News asked AccuWeather's Corey Montes this question. Will weather forecasting ever be a clear-cut science? No, I don't see that happening, says Motis. I don't ever see that happening. Weather is just too complex. Although, an interesting study by J.D. Eggleston, a father that helped his daughter with a school research project, shows that research meteorologists post better numbers on average than on TV stations. Four TV stations in Kansas City, Missouri, as well as NOAA, were compared based on accuracy of temperature predictions and probability of precipitation. This was a seven-month study from April 22nd to November 21st, 2007. This chart right here is based on the precipitation accuracy of four stations in Kansas City, Missouri, against NOAA, which is obviously the meteorologist with the degree. Obviously on days out, you're never going to have the 100% accuracy. It's always going to change. But as you can see, compared to these other TV stations, there are tons of dips of inaccuracy. And NOAA has a nice line of, of being consistent. And this chart right here 
is the temperature accuracy by degrees missed. Again, NOAA is more consistent and turns out to have the least degrees missed on days out. Remember, this is a study of seven months. And this chart here is all of the information combined on an average of changing their mind of a, within a seven day forecast. Only 23% for NOAA is changed under precipitation as their mind changes as the seven days come, come close. And they also have, NOAA also has the least temperature change of mind within the seven days as well compared to these channels in Kansas City, Missouri. <coughs> Meteorology is too difficult of a field to simply gain admission into without the appropriate studies. Therefore, I have a proposition to make that will fix this problem. A requirement of a meteorology degree in order to hire, be hired as a meteorology broadcaster. Fred Godomsky, a Hall of Fame inductee for the Weather Discovery Center, is also a teacher who provides meteorology majors a class that teaches how to be on TV. Fred argues that the public should receive their info from a certified meteorologist that also was educated in television broadcasting. Info from Scientific American Presents says that when severe weather forms, the public should be warned from a professional who is knowledgeable for your safety reasons. TV audiences, though, want more than facts. Mostly, they just want to be entertained. That is what helped Gadowski come up with his class to educate certified meteorologists the key elements of being on television. By requiring a class that teaches basic rules of being a television broadcaster for meteorology majors, there is a greater chance of opportunity and it comes from the meteorology department. By having TV meteorologists with a meteorology degree, the forecast could improve, public safety would increase, and people will know the position was earned by the meteorologist. That can equal only one thing, greater trust within the government-funded agency. Today, I describe the problems that revolve around television weather broadcasting. Going to school for six years for a meteorology degree that 50% of television meteorologists don't have is an issue within the area of weather broadcasting. I myself don't want to think about having wasted time towards the meteorology degree. But knowing this info hits me pretty hard in the gut. This country needs the appropriate forecaster position in these television stations. Fixing these problems could create even more accurate forecasts across the country, fewer deaths could be recorded annually because of public safety, and that a degree in meteorology will be worth the individual's time and effort.